So we're finally back from the two weeks break. Also, congratulations to Mia Mira for the job promotion. For those who don't know, this is the person that's been providing us these Jujutsu Kaisen leaks and spoilers on Twitter. Wednesday mornings would be so different without him, so I'm really happy to hear his good news. Much deserved. And with all that said, let's jump straight into these 222 spoilers. The chapter begins with Sukuna consuming the remaining fingers, but Uraume apologizes, saying that they haven't found the last finger. Sukuna says, no no problem, I'm sure Gojo Satoru has the last one. So yeah, time has clearly passed from the last chapter, as both forces have recouped to their own places and are awaiting to fight back on the 24th of December. Even though Sukuna doesn't have all 20 fingers, since Gojo has the last one, it says on the next page that he can replace the 20th finger by eating the mummified Sukuna head, the one we saw in chapter 220, and I assume the remaining four fingers were in that body as well, like in its hands. But the reason why Gojo has been secretly keeping the last Sukuna finger and has not told anyone about it was because the condition to execute Yuji initially was when he consumed all 20 fingers, as in, Gojo safeguarding the last one meant he was trying to avoid the higher-ups from killing Yuji all this time. So since the beginning of the story, when it looked like Gojo was okay to execute Yuji after eating the finger, since he proposed that idea in the first place, Gojo was actually actually gonna deny the execution and somehow work things around by keeping Yuji alive and shielding the last finger. That's our goat sensei and we'll see if this last Sukuna finger will be relevant in Yuji's upcoming power up. I feel like it has to, although the next scene switches to Kinjaku. He says that 19 days have passed and asked Kogane how many players have died from getting their curse technique removed. Kogane replies 61 players and Kenny continues to ramble some philosophy about lives and dreams. So obviously when we get the full translations on Friday, we'll be able to read some of Kenny's ramblings. I'm sure it's actually interesting, but I also like how Kenjaku was just playing video games. Unless this is something else, but no, if it is video games, and I think it just fits so well with his boredom of, you know, living a thousand years and wanting to quote unquote start some fun and create chaos. But the scene now switches to Gojo. While being treated, he says, I thought Nanami was the kind of guy who would survive in any occasions. Ijichi apologizes, but Gojo rebukes him, saying he still has a big job to do. Then Shoko says that Ino has something to talk about with Nanami. Alright, I'm gonna dive more into Gojo's reaction, if you will, for my chapter review on Friday because I know some of you guys may feel that Gojo's reaction to Nanami's death isn't what you expected, and I think that's a totally valid take. I'm not gonna say you're wrong, but I also think that Gojo suppressing his emotions is very rational given, as he just said, there's still work needing to be done. Also, the last time Gojo's emotion got the best of him, it was the result to his ceiling, right? The quick memories and moments of him and Geto when he saw Kenjaku in his body for the first time. Again, with Sukuna, Kenjaku, the merger, and the end of the culling games, he still has a big job to do, and so I don't think it's necessarily unpleasant with how he's reacting to the past events. Now, it's been a long time since we've seen Ino, I think ever since Shibuya, if I'm not mistaken, and at least on screen, this is the first time time Ino has learned or acknowledged Nanami's death and yeah he doesn't look too happy. He was a very close associate and disciple of Nanami so I wonder if and how he's gonna come into play for the final arc. I know Ino is a background character but me personally I thought his auspicious beast curse technique was cool to see and yeah well he needs to catch a W at least right. After that it switches to Meimei's perspective. She's looking at a site in which gambling is being made in Gojo and Sukuna's fight. She is delighted that even without placing any bet, she can make 50k million yen just by selling the tickets. Alright, that's a little bit weird to be honest, but hey, I guess Meimei is a money maker at heart. In terms of like the Gojo versus Sukuna fight being cited online and sold for tickets, I could be wrong and you guys can correct me, but I remember in one of the recent volume extras, it said that the world of Jujutsu or the knowledge of it was made public after the fall of its society via the Culling Games, of course. Again, to be honest with you guys, I think it's a little bit weird. I'll talk more about it in my review, but we also see Yuji training with Kusakabe. Yeah, Gege is really bringing back the entire Jujutsu crew, but Yuji easily overwhelms Kusakabe in Judo, a form of martial art. There's a dialogue in here 
here too, but it's a bit vague from the leaker's translation, so yeah, we'll have to wait until the full translations are out. But the last sort of individual scene switchings goes to Yuta and Inumaki. Yuta says he didn't tell Yuji the reason why Inumaki is missing an arm because of Sukuna, further adding that Yuji shouldn't be taking responsibility for all that. Inumaki appreciates Yuta's generosity. So that's really sweet and thoughtful for Yuji's sake, of course, and it goes both ways for Inumaki too, since I would assume Yuji had to ask Inumaki what happened to his arm, and if he did, yeah, he must have likely made a lie, obviously not saying it was from Sukuna's domain, because that would make Yuji feel way more guilt than he needs right now. I actually rewatched the Jujutsu Kaisen movie last week, and it's so nice to see Yuta and Inumaki reunite together and have like a separate duo moment just walking in this hallway. Because remember, the first time they met, it was a bit awkward until their first mission, so yeah, just pretty cool to point out. And then in the next page, this is where I was really shocked, but we already time skip to December 24th. Kinjaku says while Sukuna fights Gojo, he'll eliminate the players of the culling game. Ureume asks him to get lost, but Kenny says, don't blame me. If I don't stick with Sukuna, I was going to be killed by Gojo Satoru. Wow, I love how honest and admitting he is about Gojo being too strong for him. But okay, was I expecting this time skip to happen right away? No. Even if Gege is not the one to do training arcs, I at least felt like we were gonna get some sort of cooldown period because this is it. The next panels are pretty much the entire Jujutsu Kaisen cast getting ready to say good luck and see Gojo fight Sukuna. Like, the way it's set up, Gojo fighting Sukuna seems to be a public event, given also, again, Meimei's gambling site, whereas they're truly gonna have their one-on-one -on -one with everyone watching as the spectators. Reminds me of My Hero Academia a bit, when All Might and All For One were fighting publicly and the whole world was watching, cameras being recorded on the helicopters, I'm not sure if the same is gonna happen here, but yeah, it just feels so sudden, like the first chapter of their anticipated fight could happen next week, that's crazy to think about. I'm really hoping that this final arc is gonna be a long one because, again, it looks like Gojo's gonna have to lose this 1v1. I think, you know, our crew, Yuji, Yuta, Maki, Hakuri, they're expected to have some more moments of their own, so obviously if Gojo won his 1v1 against Sukuna, then it's Kinjaku next who, you know, admitted already that he'd get killed by Gojo, and essentially Jujutsu Kaisen ends after, right? That's why I think it's very likely for Gojo to lose, but yeah, there we go, guys. The final final arc is officially here. There's actually some very wholesome moments with the crew and Gojo in this chapter, but I'll dive into it for my review on Friday. Again, I did not expect this chapter to turn out the way it did, but at the same time, I'm excited and I hope that this final arc is at least longer than the Kling games in Shibuya. While the transitioning may have been too fast for my liking, I still trust in Gege to deliver the remainder of what's left for the story. Again, I don't want to sound repetitive, but to reiterate, this this is it guys, Gojo vs Sukuna is literally in the next chapter, It's it actually just got confirmed with the author's comments, so oh, lock in ladies and gentlemen, the potential greatest fight in this series starts next week. I remember all of us talking about how this fight is going to be so crazy and we just can't wait for it, but now knowing it's going to happen in the next chapter, yeah, it feels oddly surreal, maybe also because I'm recording this at midnight, so again, I'll go way more in depth and have my my full thoughts on Friday with the translations out. So yeah, look forward to the review and let me know your thoughts on this week's spoilers. As with all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.